Johnny Marr and Morrissey have been at it again, like two old cats hissing at each other from opposite corners of the room. In August 2024, Morrissey's website revealed that the Smiths had been offered a mega touring deal for 2025, similar to what we've just seen with Oasis, despite Andy Rourke's sad death in 2023. According to Morrissey's website, morrisseycentral.co, in June 2024, AEG Entertainment Group made a lucrative offer to both Morrissey and Ma to tour worldwide as the Smiths throughout 2025. Morrissey said yes to the offer, Ma ignored the offer. This led Ma to publishing his own statement, which refutes what Morrissey claims and talks about the whole trademark mess of the Smiths. Before we get onto that though, let's briefly cover the history of the feud between Ma and Morrissey. The Smiths did quite a bit for British rock during their five year run. They formed in 1982 and by 1983 they had signed with Rough Trade. They would oversee the release of all their studio albums, their self-titled debut in 1983, Meet His Murder in 1985, The Queen Is Dead in 1986 and their final studio album, Strange Ways Here We Come in 1987. The Smiths' music was characterised by Johnny Marr's brilliant guitar work, particularly his use of arpeggiated chord progressions combined with the tight rhythm section of Andy Rourke and Mike Joyce, and Morrissey's uniquely British lyrics that captured the essence of working class life in 1980s Britain. Despite their success, the band's remarkable journey came to an abrupt end in 1987, just before the release of Strange Ways Here We Come. Now, there are a bunch of reasons as to why the band eventually broke up, but the process started when Johnny Marr took a break. He was exhausted by the relentless touring and writing cycles of the Smiths. Shortly after, he officially left the group. An article in NME speculated that the Smiths had split because Morrissey was frustrated with Johnny Marr collaborating with other musicians. However, Marr quickly reached out to the magazine to clarify that this departure wasn't due to personal tensions with Morrissey, but rather his desire to explore new musical directions. Morrissey frequently pushed to cover 1960s pop songs, many of which were his favourites, including tracks by artists like Twinkle and Scylla Black. Reflecting on this in 1992, Johnny Marr admitted that this caused friction within the band, stating that was the last straw really, I didn't form a group to perform Scylla Black songs. And in a 2016 interview with The Guardian, Johnny Marr explained how poor management of the band led to business and financial difficulties. And Morrissey has agreed with this sentiment. Throughout their five years together, the Smiths cycled through several managers. And by the time of their split, management duties had fallen onto Johnny Marr, who was just 23 at the time. It's what split the band up, Marr explained. To this day, I haven't met anyone who thinks a major rock group should be managed by the 23-year-old guitar player. We were deemed unmanageable. When we fired managers, I always had to deal with it. I wasn't prepared to do it, and so it became untenable. There was no way forward. In a separate interview with Rolling Stone, Marr said that their contrasting personalities made the Smiths a great band, but ultimately contributed to their downfall. The differences in personalities are what often make for interesting chemistry, but eventually those same differences start to hinder progress, he said. I guess Morrissey and I just envisioned our futures differently. After their initial split, the ideological rift between Morrissey and Marr just continued to increase. In 2016, during the height of the Brexit movement, Morrissey stirred controversy among the Smiths fan base by voicing support for Brexit and endorsing UK politician Nigel Farage who has been heavily criticised for his role in Brexit and promoting anti-immigration rhetoric across Europe. Regarding Brexit, Morrissey said, The result was magnificent, but it's not accepted by the BBC or Sky News because they object to a public that cannot be hypnotised by BBC or Sky nonsense. These news teams are just like Fox and CNN. They rely on public stupidity to create their own myth of reality. Watch them at your peril. Shortly after these statements, Ma addressed the possibility of a Smiths reunion with Sky News. I can only speak for myself, but I don't feel it's necessary at all, he said. I like moving forward. Andy and I play together when I'm in New York. He joins me for a few songs and that's always nice, but that's really as far as it needs to go. When asked about Morrissey's Brexit stance, he said, we probably don't have much ideologically in common anymore. He added, I tend to hear about these things second hand. If he is pro Farage, well, that would be a bit of a drawback, as anyone might imagine. This revelation came not long after Johnny Marr released his memoir, Set the Boy Free, in which he disclosed that in 2008, he and Morrissey had briefly considered reuniting the Smiths. 
But as Johnny Marr said, suddenly there was radio silence. Our communication ended and things returned to the way they were and how I expect they will always be. Fast forward to 2022, Morrissey posted an open letter on his website criticising Johnny Marr for using his name as clickbait. We haven't known each other for 35 years, which is many lifetimes ago, Morrissey wrote, accusing Marr of persistently year after year, decade after decade, blaming him for everything from natural disasters to the dribble on your grandma's chin. Marr responded by downplaying the letter's relevance, saying an open letter hasn't really been a thing since 1953. And fast forward a couple of years later, and we're back to this. August 2024, Morrissey claims on his blog he and Marr were offered a lucrative deal to tour as the Smiths. And not long after, this appeared on Morrissey's website. The proposed greatest hits album by the Smiths, entitled Smiths Rule OK, has been blocked by J. Marr. The album and also the single Hand in Glove were planned for 2024 worldwide release by Warner Records, along with a deluxe box release of the Smiths' first album album in order to commemorate its 40-year anniversary, and also a new 7-inch of this charming man. Warner approached Morrissey and Darren Evans to assemble artwork for all four releases, all of which were rejected and halted, out of hand by J. Marr. A few days later, another new entry in Morrissey's blog appeared. J. Marr has successfully applied for 100% trademark rights slash intellectual property ownership of the Smith's name. His application has been accepted on whatever oaths or proclamations he has put forward. This action was done without any consultation to Morrissey, and without allowing Morrissey the standard opportunity of objection. Amongst many other things, this means that Marr can now tour as the Smiths using the vocalist of his choice. And it also prohibits Morrissey from using the name, whilst also denying Morrissey considerable financial livelihood. Morrissey alone created the musical unit name The Smiths in May 1982 the blog claims. And Johnny Marr's statement in response to all of this was this. A statement from Johnny Marr's management. Recent statements made by Morrissey on his website regarding the trademark of the Smith's name are incorrect. Here are the facts. In 2018, following an attempt by a third party to use the Smith's name, and upon discovery that the trademark was not owned by the band, Marr reached out to Morrissey via his representatives to work together in protecting the Smith's name. A failure to respond led Marr to register the trademark himself. It was subsequently agreed with Morrissey's lawyers that this trademark was held for the mutual benefit of Morrissey and Marr. As a gesture of goodwill, in January 2024, Marr signed an assignment of joint ownership to Morrissey. Execution of this document still requires Morrissey to sign. In the interests of accuracy and clarity regarding the trademark, and to answer recent reports that Marr ignored a promoter's offer to Taurus the Smiths, Ma says, To prevent third parties from profiting from the band's name, it was left to me to protect the legacy. This I have done on behalf of both myself and my former bandmates. As for the offer to tour, I didn't ignore the offer, I said no. Additionally, speculation about Johnny Marr touring with a different singer as the Smiths is not true. There are no such plans. Johnny Marr also confirms that he declined a suggestion for another Greatest Hits compilation from Warner Music Group, given the number already in existence. Mike Joyce, the band's drummer, told BBC Radio Manchester he found it odd the trademark and tour spat had played out in the public domain. He said he thought these issues should be dealt with by solicitors and management teams instead, but admitted it was none of my business. So what is the deal with the Smiths as a trademark? Let's get into some trademark law, shall we? And I am by no means an expert. I'm not a lawyer, but I've done a lot of research, and this is my basic understanding. When a partnership, like a band, breaks up, no individual member typically has the exclusive right to use the band's name. This principle, grounded in trademark law, aims to safeguard both the public and the shared interests of the former members. And the legal reasoning behind this is pretty straightforward. A band's name represents the group's music and identity. When people see the name The Smiths, they associate that with the whole band, not just one member. And letting just one member use the name The Smiths would confuse fans, which is exactly what trademark law tries to prevent. Additionally, the band's name is often viewed as a shared asset. Unless there's an agreement stating otherwise, all members usually have equal rights to the name. This means no single member can use it without the other's approval. Trademark law also protects the goodwill attached to a band's name which reflects the collective efforts and reputation of all its members. Allowing one person to use the name alone could unfairly take advantage of the group's shared legacy and harm its overall brand. However, the situation with the Smiths, that being Morrissey claiming that Johnny Marr has 100% ownership of the Smiths' trademark, is quite unusual. 
But Ma said in his statement that this is simply because Morrissey didn't respond to his offer. Obviously, it's hard to know the truth. Is Morrissey being overdramatic, or is Ma really planning to pull a fast one and bring back the Smiths without Morrissey? Personally, I think the latter is very far-fetched. It seems to me that Ma is interested in preserving the legacy of the Smiths rather than ruining it, hence why he refused that lucrative offer from AEG. But of course, I can also see why Morrissey could be worried. We saw a similar thing with Pink Floyd. Roger Waters left the band and David Gilmour continued to tour and make music as Pink Floyd. Waters then took legal action. So these kind of situations really do bring up a lot of questions about band ownership and trademark and all that fun stuff. But what do you think about the whole situation? Let me know in the comments below. And to see my full video about the Pink Floyd feud, you can click over here and watch that next.